This is Nicholas and this is Nicole. Nicole is 18 and a committed Christian. For Nicole, her faith is everything. She says she couldn't survive without it. She also believes Christianity is the only way and that Jesus is the Son of God and he died to save us. And this is Nicholas, who's also 18. Nicholas is an atheist. He rejects all this religion stuff. Indeed, he rejects all religions. If there is a God, he says, where's the evidence? To Nicholas, religion is all in the mind. Religion, who needs it? The subject of today's It's My Life. Welcome to It's My Life. Religion, who needs it? Well, quite a lot of people. The world's two biggest religions, Christianity and Islam, have between them over two billion committed followers. Other religions, like Hinduism and Buddhism, also have huge numbers of followers. But there are also plenty of people, like young Nicholas here, who just don't get it. They say there's no scientific proof that God exists, yet there's plenty of evidence religion causes war and suffering. Now, come to think of it, why are there so many religions anyway? They can't all be right. In our audience, young people and experts with strong views on the subject of religion, including the eminent scientist Professor Richard Dawkins, who definitely believes there is no God. We'll be hearing from all of them later, but first, Nicole. What does your religion, you're a Christian, mean to you? Um, my religion means everything to me. Um, I couldn't get through a single day without my, my God there, and it affects every area of my life. Every decision I make, I don't make on my own, I make it with God. Well, what about the fact that it does co it's caused all these wars and people have been praying for these wars to stop for years and they've not? But it's not the religion, it's not at all religion that causes wars. If you look at all of the religions, particularly Christianity, the, uh, the main focus of that is about love. And in no way could you say that going out and killing someone, starting a, a war, is an act of love. Mm -hmm. It's people's interpretation of religion that causes the problems. And what, what do you think of other religions, you know, because there's like people who are Hindus, people who are Buddhists, you know, uh, Muslims? Well, personally, as a Christian, I believe that, you know, it says in the Bible, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Therefore, you know, I have to believe that Christianity is the right way. But it doesn't mean that I don't respect other people's religions. And but they're wrong. At the end of the day, that I believe that the only way to get to heaven, to get to the Father, is through Jesus and through Jesus Christianity. Okay. Wait a minute, you will get you get your chance <laughs> in a minute, Nicholas. Now, Nicholas, you were about to do it anyway, but what do you think about what Nicole said? I disagree with her. I mean, I don't believe in God, and I can see ways that you can get around things, you know, difficult situations, you think about it, and you work it out for your own self. Well, why do you think she, she believes so strongly, then? Because some people have weaknesses in their lives, whatever those are, I mean, you might not know them themselves, but they're not self-confident enough to think about it, you know, and have to turn to God, religion, whatever, for that sh safety blanket, you know. What, as a kind of crutch, you mean? Yeah. Well, what do you believe in, then? I don't believe in, well, I believe that we're here through evolution, through science, and there's no such thing as God. Do you but think she's wasting her time? In some ways, yeah, I mean, I think she needs to address the problems that are causing her to use religion as a safety blanket. <laughs> rather than just turning to religion as a safety blanket. Safety blanket, a crutch, a way of simplifying in terms of giving you a guide, a guide of how you should live your life. I always think that's one of the most ironic statements because Christianity is anything but safe because you're, we're called then to be different, to stand out in a time when the, you know, what everyone strives to do with all their day is to fit in and to be normal. And it's anything but a safety crutch, anything but a safety blanket. OK, listen, we're going to be talking about this uh, more, but for the, in the meantime, thank you, Nicholas, thank you, Nicole. Uh, and now let's find out, I'm a bit frightened of this one, what our audience think. <laughs> I thought, first of all, I'll, I'll come to a guy whose books I had to read when I was uh, studying biology at college, uh, Professor Richard Dawkins. I mean, you wrote The Selfish Gene, in, in which you basically said that we're all machines built by chemicals. That's what we are, you know, these chemicals that want to survive. I mean, what, 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 what proof have you got that there is no God? 
it's the wrong question to ask mm. what proof I've got that there is no God or indeed no anything else. You don't prove a negative. What you say is there is no positive evidence that there is. There's an infinite number of things that there could be and isn't. Bertrand Russell said there might be a teapot in orbit about the sun. Well, we, don't, we can't disprove it. We can't say there is no teapot. It's just that there is no evidence that there is. In the absence of any evidence that there is, one naturally assumes that probably there isn't. Of course, one day we could be disillusioned and somebody will discover a celestial teapot, <laughs> but it seems exceedingly unlikely. God is the same. As long as there is absolutely not a shred of evidence that there is a supreme being, then we have to go along with the more parsimonious assumption, the more uh, economical assumption that there is not. Now, what, what would you say to Nicole then? She's a committed Christian. She believes in God. She's got faith. Well, I, I, sh I should say that she's simply wrong. Uh, and um, I don't want to that to sound facetious because I think that the, the hypothesis that there is a supreme being is an exceedingly interesting one. So I don't want to denigrate the question. But yes, I would say she's wasting her time. And as for gaining consolation and for saying she couldn't get along for a single day without it, well, I actually believe that, that may be true. But the fact that you can't get along for a day without something does not make it true. Well, it's like being an alcoholic or a yeah. drug addict, is that what you're mm. saying? Yeah. I, I mean, j just quickly before we move on to other people, uh, y you did say in one of your books, uh, The Blind Watchmaker, that in fact, you know, before Darwin, you, w you would have to believe in God, because that was a way to explain everything, why we're well, here, life and everything else. It is true that life is immensely complicated and apparently beautifully designed. Everything about a living thing looks as though it's been designed. And therefore, before Darwin came along and gave us the true explanation, it must have been very tempting to assume that in the same way as a car or an aeroplane obviously has a designer, therefore living things must have a designer too. That must have been a great temptation, but it's now after 1859 that temptation is gone. There is no such evidence anymore. Okay, right. Uh, Chris. A few people want to speak. I mean, first, well, first of all, we'll go, we'll go, go to you. What, what do you think about what Professor Dawkins has said? Can I just ask you a question? So, you believe there's no God. You know there is no God. I believe that the status of a God is the same as the status of a celestial teapot. I don't know there is no celestial so teapot. How, what is your percentage of your knowledge there's no God? Would you say about, say, 90% there's no God? Would you say 91%? The same as the teapot, about 99.99. So surely for that, even if it's 0.01%, maybe you should look into it even further because maybe when you die something could happen and you won't go to heaven where well, in this life if you'd have actually looked into it. That's known as that Pascal's wager. And the problem with it is that, I mean, it's saying you, you might as well gamble on it because you've nothing mm. to lose. But the trouble is that... The, that since there's any possible conceivable God that there could be, there could be a God who will send you to hell if you believe in him, or there could be a God who insists that you, you believe in green goats. I mean, that any number of things that you could, you could... There's no reason to gamble on the particular God you were brought up with, whether it's the Christian, Jewish or Muslim one. Mm -hmm. Hang on, Leanne. Yeah, I mean, I'm a spiritual person, but I don't feel like I have to have a, a person or put a name to, to it. And I don't, I'm uncomfortable with the idea of... Um, like you said before, I don't know what's the name, but um, saying something like you won't get to heaven because you didn't believe in God. I mean, I don't want to be part of that God. I don't, mm. I don't want that. Thanks very much. I think that's wrong. Yeah, y Yossi, what, what were you going to say? Um, I was just going to say that I think there's a... I, I think that your understanding of science and the way theories are proved or disproved is actually very narrow. Um, Newton's laws are wrong. They are very simply wrong. They don't include something very important, which is relativity. Nevertheless, for a long time, people thought that they were absolutely right yeah. because they were the only thing that had been proved. Um, a century ago, we thought that we were tying up all of the loose ends of science. Then we discovered quantum physics, and the whole scientific world blew itself to well, pieces. Stephen Hawking doesn't believe in God, though. And, and that's absolutely he fine. Says there was no need for it. The universe is just kind of why does being everything, and is. Why does everything have to be to the exclusion of another thing? Why yeah. can't we understand the value yeah. of, of following our own belief system and faith system and allowing other people to do the same thing? Well, but is it, is it, isn't there also the other point of view whereby it's a strange thing whereby you can criticise somebody for being a Conservative, being a Manchester United fan, being a Liverpool fan, and yet the minute you know I say to you, I mean, what, what are you Jewish? 
I say, right, so a country the size of Wales, that's very deserty, God comes to this desert tribe there, nobody else in the world. Do you, do you know what I mean? I can't criticise that. By all means, by all means, criticise me. The only reason why God went to a particular people was to show the world that each people can have its own relationship with God and that Judaism doesn't exist to the exclusion of other belief systems but actually Judaism was was a method in some way of teaching the whole world that each nation yeah. each group of people okay. can have a different relationship okay with God. fair enough uh, Professor Dawkins uh, with you again you've stuck your head over the parapet you're an eminent scientist you could just carry on with your scientific theories without one saying listen I don't really think you need a God for evolution and for life I mean so why do you choose to do it because I do think it's an interesting scientific theory and I mean scientific theory there is a scientific theory that there is a supreme intelligence who governed and created the universe what a fascinating theory let's look for the evidence is there any absolutely none that is a scientific question, which is an interesting scientific question. Hannah? Um, just quite interested to know what sort of evidence um, you would need to, to see as a scientist to, to actually believe there was a God. What sort of things would you be looking for to find out that there was a God? Yeah. I mean, I mean clearly, if, if, say, something like um, the clouds spontaneously formed themselves into uh, writing that says, I exist, um, <laughs> signed God, that would be convincing evidence. A lot of people think that the evidence from life actually is as convincing as that, and it's my life's work to show that that's wrong. How many people, even if, if, if you did get this, you know, you could follow all the arguments, the scientific arguments, and all this science kind of said, well, look, we don't need a God. The universe didn't need a God to create it. Life didn't need a God to create it. How many would still believe in God? Absolute scientific evidence. No, I, I mean, I'm just asking the question. I would, I would I still believe it. Yeah. I still believe in God. I mean, my question is, um, there's so much, so many, uh, there's so much proof in our holy book that um, was written. Wait, which, which uh, holy book the, is that? The Quran. Yeah. There's evidence in there that the scientists have just recently proven. Um, what, what's like that? Eating with your hands creates enzymes. How would you prove something like that? Who, who would have written it then? I'm I just asking a question. That eating, eating with, with your, your hands, hands creates, creates enzymes. enzymes. It's good for you. I mean, yeah, I, I, mean I, I, I was, I mean, no, no, no offence, but it's, it's like, why, why would uh, God say to Muhammad, e eat with your hands, and then it's proved scientifically there's enzymes, and why didn't God tell Muhammad that the world wasn't flat? You know, that might have been a bit more useful, really. Um, sorry, Pete. Yeah, I think um, in the in the in the modern day and age, I've got a mic. Sorry. Oh yeah. Um, you know, through through since Darwin and. and since then, people's uh, general feelings has, has become that, you know, the people in the heart of hearts, I think, believe that is e through evolution. People have developed through evolution. But as uh, lowering uh, religious numbers, particularly in this country, have shown, it's taking, if people are scared to, to kind of dismiss religion. So it's taking a long time for people to actually, one by one, slowly uh, kind of turn against what you've been taught for, for three centuries. Mm -hmm. uh, and the people, oh sorry, Tristan, quickly. I think um, what a lot of religion, I mean personally I'm, I'm uh, not massively religious myself but uh, I believe there's obviously something but I think people turn to religion a lot of time just as a crutch, as something to guide their lives because otherwise they wouldn't be able to cope with it, wouldn't be able to cope with the responsibility of uh, looking after themselves and, and making their own path through life. Mm -hmm. Okay, well listen, we're going to discuss this more, but you can uh, join us after the break when we'll meet Kasim here from the Muslim Education Council on why he thinks Islam is the only way for him. Find out why after the break. <laughs> And welcome back to It's My Life. Today's subject is, of course, religion. Do we need it? And Kasim, you're from the uh, Muslim Education Council. Is Islam the only way for you? For me, Islam is the religion that gives me direction, gives me confidence, makes me understand humanity, and gives me a clear picture of why, as human beings, that we are here today and how we should live together. I think it's the perfect book for direction in a world where there's so much chaos, destruction, war. If you look at history, if we look at the concept of, let's say, from Adam and Eve until today, you know, man has been at each other's throats from, from day go. And I think religion is the only thing that really gives you a, a balanced way to move forward. It teaches me how to handle myself in this world. Uh, it teaches me how to, you know, from, from eating to marriage, 
to communicating yeah. with people, to setting up uh, an environment of humanity. So what would charity. you say to Professor Dawkins who doesn't believe in that there's well, a God? Well, I mean, he's a professor, and, and I was very surprised with the analogy that he gave of a teapot. If you can believe in a teapot, then why can't you believe in God? I think it would have been easier to give that 0.01% of the teacup floating around in space. I mean, and you said, is there you know, scientific evidence? If you look at the Quran, and this is really interesting, it talks about simple things of how the mountains stack, of the rotations of the planets, yeah, of the distance of the planets, of the expansion yeah. theory. Well, you can he was, to the, listen, the Galileo and Capronis Romney. One minute, just let me finish on this, but Galileo and Capronis, you know, in their time thought the world was flat. And yet, the time of uh, Islam, 1400 years ago, the Quran did say, see, the world is not flat, it rotates, it's a sphere. So there's, uh, there's scientific evidence there. You know, okay. the concept of birth, the scientific evidence is there. Okay, can so, we talk you know, to Professor Dawkins? Did, did I hear you to say back to the time of Adam and Eve? Does that mean you believe in Adam and Eve? I do believe in Adam you and Eve. You seriously believe in Adam and you Eve? You tell me what's wrong with not believing with Adam and Eve. Do you believe? You know, but, yeah. but the story of Adam and Eve, you, th you think before Adam and Eve there were no humans and then they suddenly came? I believe the ultimate creator is God and through his wisdom he created Adam and Eve and from Adam and Eve we ex expanded to what we are today. So do you think we're cousins of chimpanzees? You might be one, but no. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Professor Dawkins, what, 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 do you actually, what do you actually think of uh, religions like Islam? <laughs> if Islam teaches that, that Adam and Eve were the first humans and that we are not cousins of chimpanzees and that evolution didn't happen, uh, then Islam is simply false. And if Judaism teaches that, it's false. And if Christianity teaches that, it's false. Fortunately, educated Jews, Christians and Muslims who have been properly educated in science do not believe that. Educated Christians, Jews and Muslims do believe in evolution, do believe that we are cousins of chimpanzees and would be very embarrassed at their faith being brought down by people who defy what are now obvious and unquestioned scientific facts. Yeah. But just on oh, oh, hang on, hang on, Andre. Thanks. Oh, yeah, oh, you got I mean, on. there's always huge amounts of debates about various religious texts, and somebody will always pluck out one particular item and say, no, this is a fact, and this was said in a religious text. Having read various religious texts, it really strikes me that between them all, they seem to have said just about everything, and therefore the law of averages dictates that one thing that they've said is guaranteed to be right amongst all the waffle. But I think when you talk about religion, the reason that there's so many religions and there's so, so much of a plurality is because these religious texts are quite simply made up. They were written by somebody, they were just invented. I mean, the whole story of Genesis, Adam and Eve, is so absolutely outlandishly ludicrous that it's barely, as has been said, it's barely not even worth talking about. Yeah, but it, that was a story for farmers. 3,000 years no, ago. No, no, what it actually proves, Terry, what it actually proves, Terry, what it proves is, what it proves is that um, when, when people were drafting the Bible, whatever their particular theory was on how the world had come about, they felt that it was best to sort of mm -hmm. dupe people into believing this Adam and Eve thing because they wanted it to be nice and simple for people to understand, which okay. I think in itself is quite worrying. Sarah Bullock, I mean, you're a Christian. I am. What do you believe? I don't believe in the literal story of Adam and Eve. I don't believe in that. Um, I'm married to a physicist who wouldn't let me get away with that, <laughs> um, even if I had a tendency to do so. Um, I do believe that the story of Adam and Eve is a story to help people to understand God's hand in creation. Okay. As you said earlier, I think it's a way of helping people to understand God's actions in, our, in creation and in our lives. I but, don't but, actually but, I mean, believe. If your hus husband is a physicist, does yeah. he believe in God? He certainly does. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, in, in so where does where does God come into physics then? Because everywhere, uh, I think in response to Professor Dawkins' point, you know that uh, John Polkinghorn says that there is a mathematical intelligibility about creation. Mm. You know, he's a theologian and a scientist. He says there is a mathematical intelligibility about creation. If you're looking for evidence, as you say, I do see it all around me, but that's a matter of my faith. That's right. Faith, Faith is not just true. about evidence. Terry, can I come back with one quick sentence? Yeah. All, I want, all I wanted to say was, if we accept that the human brain hasn't evolved too much mm. in the last 2,000 years, why was it 
Uh, why couldn't the Bible have just said, or 5,000 years or whatever it is, mm -hmm. why couldn't the Bible have just said what actually happened? Because if people were no more stupid or intelligent back then, yes. wouldn't it have made sense to write the real thing? Yeah. Then we wouldn't have had this argument. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. Education <laughs> hasn't. The brain may have not have changed that but much, but, but the Bible is about educating people, life. surely. Can, can I mean, all the religion... Wait, wait a minute. It strikes me that when you... But, 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 if you want to write... If you want to hang write on, a book... Hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on a minute. Can all the religions be right, though? Can they all be right? Of course they can. But they have a common premise. They have a, if you look at if you look at Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Montesquieu, they have a common premise. It's yeah, to but, believe but, but to believe despite in that common premise, people kill each other because of religion all the time, don't they? The You've only got to look no, at. No, it's the politicians and the economics that causes wars. I mean, if you look at what happened in World War One, World War Two, the slave triangle, the killing of the Aborigines, that had nothing to do with religion. It had to do with man's greed for economic development, and this is where the problem has. Religion and politics go together. They're one thing. It's man's greed that we have to stop. Not religion. Religion is the only thing that gives some some direction. Hang on, hang on, Bella. Well, I'm both a scientist and I'm a very spiritual person, and I believe in both equally. So. Well, religion and science. Well, I'm a Reiki master, and I'm also studying astral physics at university, and I think that both hold an equal part in my life. What's Reiki? Reiki is spiritual healing. Is it? What? Where you don't touch it like that? Oh, yeah. you're better. <laughs> Basically, it takes a bit longer than that. Yeah. <laughs> That's that, well. I mean, I mean, and does it work? But also, but Reiki accepts people of all religions. Like I'm a Hindu. I was brought up as a Hindu, but I've got friends who are also Reiki masters, and they're Irish, Roman Catholic. There's Muslims. There's Christians. There's atheists. It accepts mm -hmm. people of all religions. Yeah. And do you think all religions are right? I think they're right for the person who wants to believe in it. Everyone yeah. can find their own way to believe in something. Mm. That's in my right. father's house is many mansions. Is that what it, is that what it means in the Bible when it says that? I don't think all religions can all be right because they um, they actually all contradict each other. You know that you know you've got some religions say there's one God and some religions that say there's no God, there's a thing, and there's other religions that say there's thousands of gods. So they can't all be right. It would be nice to think they could yeah. be. You know that would make yeah. us all feel a lot happier, but they can't. And so it's somewhere along the line we have to actually look and say if there is, if religion is true then one is right and some are wrong. And so you we just have to pick one okay and hope for, the, hope for the best, Well, is that I think, it? no, that's where you then bring things like science into it, perhaps, and actually say, you know, yeah, but because science just means the pursuit of knowledge. That's mm -hmm. actually what it is. And I think, I mean, Einstein said, you know, science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind. It's stupid just Hang to on. believe in something yeah. without looking okay, into fair it. Enough. So what do you believe? But, well, I'm a Christian. Yeah. So I actually So science has told you that yours is right. I think, there's, I think there's a lot that science helps me to believe what I believe. It, it okay. backs it up, yeah. So it's not, just it's, not just a question of, yeah. it's not just a question of pick one and stick no, with it? No, no, exactly. I don't okay. blindly just believe something. I didn't close my eyes on a book of religion, a psychopedia of religions, and go for that one. Mm. I've, it's something I've looked into. I've uh, looked for facts. Oh, Ch Charles, you're, you're, you're Jewish. You remember all that Old Testament started the right old ball rolling, didn't they? Right. This is, this is true. But I, I wouldn't like to say... I don't think Judaism believes that it is the only religion, it's the right religion. He believes it's right for Jews, and that as long as everyone else actually would adhere to the seven laws of uh, humanity and they're good and they're moral people, then they don't have to be Jewish. No, we don't go out and we don't ever try and convert and bring in. Oh, are you looking at Jewish, Jewish as being a race rather than a religion? No, I'm looking at it as being a religion, but a religion for Jews, not for everyone. Mm. Right. Yeah, but if you look that. at the if you look at the Bible, for instance, if you look at Islam and Quran and the prophets, they actually God said very clearly that I have sent messengers to give you direction. So the prophets have come down to give all mankind yeah. direction and how to get to know yeah. each other. He said we well, made you, you can, different so you can get to know each other. So the concepts of religion is to give all mankind a direction in which to move in. Now, I, mean, I mean, the thing is, people say, can you believe in Muhammad and Jesus? I mean, well, they're both well, in the, the Muslims Quran, do, aren't they? they? Yes, of course they the do. The Muslims believe in all um, the prophets. So, so you can, but you don't believe that Jesus was the son of God? No, because, you know, we say, we say kun for ya kun, God can do everything, be and it is. Yeah. If he can create the whole universe, then he can create his viceroys and his representatives on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you can't, so you, you, can't, you can't believe that. And can, can you be a Christian by, if you don't believe that Jesus was the son of God? Oi, pack it in. <laughs> can I say, I don't think there's any point in trying to prove or disprove anything that's happened in the past, because we're not going to do that, especially not in this room. But what I want to say is that what's personal to me and what nobody can take away from me is that there's power in the name of Jesus. And Jesus, is, Jesus okay. has proved himself to me, and nobody can disprove that. And I just think if you'd look for a personal relationship with God, that's the way you know he's real, not through trying to prove anything or yeah. not. Yeah, but sure. if you watch, if you watch hang these hang programs on. with, like... Um, you know, the spiritualists that you see on a lot of the sort of cable channels, and they'll go, right, 
who which one of you has a connection with the letter J now to somebody that proves that that guy is actually talking to one of their relatives to everybody okay. else it's clearly ludicrous yeah, and so what happened okay. what strikes wait, me wait, 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 wait. what strikes me something Listen. something something good happens in Oops. your life and you thank God for it when something bad happens in your life you say that was despite God it's just absolutely silly it really is it's just professional silliness professional psychics to religious bodies well why not they are religious they're spiritual they that a psychic is the same as, as, as a religious person. Why not? I've, I've been there and they say, is there anyone with a connection to Johnny? And I would say, yeah, where yes. did he leave the money? <laughs> <laughs> no. OK, listen, we're going to talk, talk about this more. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes for more answers to the question, religion, who needs it? Needs it. That's the topic of our debate here on It's My Life today. And I was going to say, yeah, a big, strong rope and a lynch mob. Who needs one of them? Um, Roger, you're a humanist, aren't you, and an atheist? Yes. You don't believe... Well, I mean, you don't believe in anything, do you? Do oh, I God. do believe in... I don't believe in anything to do with God. I, I do believe, however, that uh, my humanist belief helps me to live a better life. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if I, if I ran down some of the great world's religions for you, so I said to you, Judaism, what do you think of that? I would say it's, uh, it's an ancient myth. Mm -hmm. And if I then said to you, Christianity? Um, a Middle East religion, also now past its sell-by date. Islam? Uh, a slightly newer religion, also um, not strictly necessary. Mm -hmm. So wh why do you think pe people are so into religions then? If because they're told to be when, when they're small. Um, it, when, chi when children are born, they're born into, into families which already have religion if there's religion about so if you t you take a uh, take a, fo a footballer's son uh, people say this j this boy he might grow up to be a footballer but if you're born into a catholic family you are a catholic and so it it progresses and and uh, the the religious masses are created and kept in this way because some religions are very difficult to leave yeah, very difficult to get out of them. I mean, is that why you're a Christian? Because no, your parents are Christians. No, not at all. No, that's an incredible generalisation. So, to what make. are your you parents can't say then? That. My parents themselves don't go to church. I know, but uh, were they Christians though? No, I mean. They the may say that they're Christians. Being a Christian isn't about being born into a family or having Christian parents or Christian grandparents. Being a mm. Christian is about having a personal relationship with Christ, being, mm. you know, experiencing something for yourself which you can't turn your back on. I'm not a Christian just because someone said to me, yeah, it's true. I'm a Christian because I know for myself, for the experiences that I have had, that it's real. Professor Dawkins, do you, do you think in a way religion <laughs> could be likened to a sort of virus which is uh, passed down from generation to generation? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, because it is basically, isn't it? I mean, Kasim's very ardent Muslim, but yeah. I'm sure his parents are Muslim. Uh, it's certainly true that, that by far the, the, the best predictor of what a person's religion will be is their parents' religion. Um, nearly everybody who is religious, not quite everybody, but nearly everybody has the same religion as their parents. And in all cases, it just happens to be the right religion. Go on. Um, I don't agree that it's just something that your parents um, bring you up with. I think the, the very nature that we have in this programme and a lot of the, the things that people are discussing here shows that there is actually a need for some kind of spirituality yeah. within each person. So there's m the most of the people here would probably agree that there is something other than they believe, there is something other than just um, science and, and this life or whatever. And so that, that obviously shows there is an intrinsic thing within us that's, that, that says we need and something else to believe in and whatever that is I don't think you can I think it's a bit foolish to ignore that that exists in the majority of, of human beings um, Can't and say you feel spiritual about things without without having to mean anything to do with God just think oh that looks lovely nice sky nice sunset I think you can be spiritual people without believing in God but I personally believe in God and, and that is how I um, uh -huh. express my spirituality and I think that's the, the right way obviously but um, yeah I think you can be spiritual people without necessarily believing in God Okay, and what, what about the rituals of religion? I mean, what, what are they all about, really? You know, I mean, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, well, well, for instance, I mean, let's, let's say you, Charles. I mean, you're Jewish. You don't eat pork. Right. Um, you know, there's like seven candlesticks and, you know, the celebration of the Passover and all the rest of it. Right. I mean, do, do you think that if God created the whole universe, he's watching you? Oh, watch what you eat and... Uh, but I think he would know best what is for what's best for me, and he's given me the guidelines as, how, as to how to live my life. Um, I don't believe I'm going to burn in hell or anything like that. Judaism doesn't actually believe in that concept. 
if I didn't do these things, but I feel as by carrying out these rituals, um, it makes it gives me direction. It makes me a fuller fuller person. And that every ritual, because God has said commemorate the Passover, it not only is it a link to the past and to the history, but it helps me with my relationship to God. Um, and Nicholas was saying before about being an atheist, and there's no proof. But you know, I'd be very interested to know if, if he was, you know, in his car and he was going off the edge of a cliff, or in that life or death situation. I think 99.99% of people would actually, at that crucial moment between life and death, they'd say that quick prayer. That oh, well, prayer. We're, we're, that's, that's we're back the, to Professor Dawkins and, and that's, Pascal's. That's, that's the important McCauley. thing. That it's inside. At the end of the day, it's inside everyone. And dare I say it, I even believe it's inside the professor. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Dawkins. <laughs> if you're going off true. the cliff, you're going to play Pascal's yeah, there are no atheists in stratagem or whatever. If it's, if it's true and I, in my case it would not be true, but if it were true, that wouldn't bear in the slightest degree on the truth of the matter. The fact that people in their human frailty may call out in their death throes to something, like an imaginary friend or, or something like that, does not in any way Medical bear case. upon whether it's true. Mm -hmm. It just means that they're rather pathetic. <laughs> S Sarah, no atheists on the deathbed, though. That's what this guy's saying, Charles. I mean, one of the interesting things about this discussion is that people are talking about religion as if it's there, it's there for when you're desperate. You know, being a Christian, you don't become a Christian by being born into a Christian household any more than you become a burger by being born in a burger bar. You know, um, <laughs> it's actually a matter of belief. It's a matter of faith. OK. Oh, sorry, go on. I think it's a good point you're making. I think that... I was saying to someone here, I think there should be research into people who are believers and who are non-believers and who are maybes. I think you'd find distinct um, similarities between family setup and personality traits as well. Because I did a course when I was about 16 uh, um, to learn about Christianity, and I found that they're all very similar. Now, I'm generalising, I understand that, but I think that research should be done it well. Not should be, but it could would be interesting to see the, um, you know, the similarities. Oh, God. There's quite a few of us here that work with young people that have had absolutely no Christian background teaching at all, and yet, you know, they're the roughest of, of the rough in prison all the time. They become a Christian and completely transform like that. And, you know, there's no uh, family background traits of anything like that. You know, it's purely the power of God. Mm -hmm. And you can't deny that. It is in the yeah. power of God. But, but, but it is all carrot and stick, isn't it? All a bit carrot and stick, isn't it? Do this or you go to hell. No. Don't do that. Well, I mean, when you read the Bible, it is. Oh, Roger. Um... I, I work as a humanist officiant. That means I uh, supervise funeral ceremonies for people who don't believe in God. And one of the things that I have to tell people, and th this is something they want to hear, is that when life is finished, when you're dead, it's over, there is no more. And that, of course, is a great reason for grief, but it's also a great reason for celebration, because you've had a life and this has been a better time than ever before in which to live because of the, the advances that have been made in medical science all of us here expect a better quality of life than any previous generation okay Kasim, we're going to give a final word to you before we go over that to our key guests yeah. religion why you know talk us into it then you know do we need god well everybody do you need religion? everybody needs something that's come up very clear from here and religion has given us all direction. I think it's united us together. Look, we're discussing in an amicable way here. And I think many people in this room have some form of concept of a creator. No matter how the earth was created or the universe was created, even the scientists will come back and say there was some process behind it. And I'm saying that process was God. Oh, not Professor Dawkins. He did well, say, there has he to did be a say, process he did say, behind he did it, say. but it just doesn't have to be God. Well, listen, thanks for talking <laughs> to us. We're going to have the final word, though, from our key guests, and that's Nicole and Nicholas. <laughs> uh, religion, basically, you're, you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible that, that people will ever change their minds about it? I won't ever change my mind about it. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you think that people should be allowed to discuss it a bit more openly like we have, have done today? Definitely, because, I mean, one of the, the things as Christians we're called to do is to evangelise to other people. If you're not going to talk about it, how can you spread the word of God? Mm -hmm. 
And we have I mean, to be able to. well, if you go through our the word of God's already well, well and truly spread. Uh, is there nothing that Professor Dawkins has said that's maybe made you change your mind? Not at all. Nothing. Nothing he could ever say to me could make me change my mind. Do you think he'll I go to hell? True. No. And I, I think the one thing it's important to say, I can't. I can't sit here and tell you who out of this room is going to hell and who's not. I'm not God. According to the Bible, he will, though, won't he? Because he's like, you know what I mean? He's going against the word of God. He's saying, don't believe this. But everyone will be judged when they get there. I'm not going to sit here and judge him and say he's going to hell now because I have no right to do that. So you still not think Christianity is the best? Yeah, definitely. And do you, would you not like to have a bit of, bit of that well, faith that Nicola, Nicola's I've got? got? My, I've got what I consider to be my faith. My friend, yeah, I mean, if, I, if I'm down... I'll go down to the pub with my mates and, you know, cheer up, you know, and, you know, have some pints and, you know, cheer myself up and have a game of pool and, get, you know, lose awful, awfully. But it'll cheer me up because I'll feel better because I'm having friendship with my mates. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be enjoying myself. Life, you know, when we die, we've got to celebrate life. It's not, you know, that's the end of it. We're dead. But there's always the memory of us. We've got to celebrate that memory of us. And going back to what um, Charles said about the car crash, you know, falling off the cliff, first thing I'll do is try and get out the door <laughs> and, you know, jump before it goes over the cliff. Uh, we'll have to finish the discussion there, but thanks, Nicole, and thank you, Nicholas. Now, there's no doubt in the intense personal experience people like Nicole have. Faith is central to her life, as it is for many in our audience. But at the end of the day, we just have to recognise that faith is faith and not fact. For many, that's hard to understand and even harder to accept. Till next time, from It's My Life, goodbye.